diet cookbook that is based on quick, easy recipes that you can prepare, a patient can prepare if they're on a low iodine diet. Um, and the recipes, all, use, are, all the ingredients that are used are lid safe. There's no concern with having to worry. What really what it happens is it all starts out in the shopping cart. So what happens is you go out shopping and manufacturers change ingredients and you don't know what's in anything. The key basically to this diet is salt. And it's not really a low salt diet. People say, oh, salt, sodium. You know, can't, I, I'm on a low sodium diet, but how does this work? This is kosher for Passover, it happens, but it's a non-iodized salt. It's a coarse salt and it's fine to use. Uh, you can, you, when you shop for salt, you have to look for a non-iodized version. Uh, there are, there's a lot of controversy on what you can, can't use, but you know if it came from a packaged product, that's one thing because you don't know what type of salt they put into the, into the packages, into the packaged ingredients. Like if you buy a bag of potato chips, what did they use? Did they use sea salt? What, what was the, the whole process that was used um, for um, how, they, how they process it? How was their equipment used? There's all this huge concern. So if you prepare it at home, you are in control. And the idea is to, give, to empower the patient or to empower the chef. So a kosher salt in Canada, there's, they're different throughout the world, but basically this is a kosher salt, a non-iodized salt. Those are the words that you have to look for on your package. Um, the other concern, okay, we're talking about no dairy. So what happens? You say, oh, I can't have dairy. Um, in my book, there are sources, there's how to make your own coconut milk and you can take the coconut and you can basically uh, pour boiling water over it and let it steep and then you uh, basically you'll put it through a filter or a strainer and you have coconut milk. Um, check your labels. This happens to be a very good brand. It's so delicious. The coconut milk beverage. Um, it's, uh, there is no salt in it. I don't think, or whatever, it's, yeah, this is a no salt added. Uh, it contains coconut. You're, you're, you have to know how to read a label. Contains coconut, no worry. So this is good for breakfast cereals, it's good for your coffee. Patients have problems with breakfast. Uh, what am I going to eat? I can't, have, I can't have my omelet with my bacon with my, or my ham or anything like that. I can't use the butter on the pan. I can't butter my toast. I can't use the bod bread. Uh, I'm going to have to eat rice crackers. Uh, one of the alternatives is you can make your own bread. Very simple and I've given um, wonderful instructions of alternatives. If you have a bread machine, you can make it. How You can turn it into rolls, you can turn it into whatever. You can use matzah, which is basically flour and water. Uh, believe it or not, I found them, you can find them on Amazon. At Passover time, they were like really expensive, and somebody told me they were like 25 cents a box in some of the grocery stores in some of the kosher areas. So get to know um, a Jew, the Jewish markets in your area or the, or the ethnic foods area. Um, oatmeal, quick cooking oats. This is just plain straight oats, Bob's Red Mill. Uh, flour, some sugar, take this over. Breakfast. Egg whites. You can take your eggs, you can separate them out, um, and you can use um, the egg whites to make wonderful omelets. Uh, they will be um, hard, actually heart healthy. Uh, this is the easier way. Basically, a quarter of a cup is the equivalent of an egg. So you can do that with just a little bit of, like this is a sunflower, I usually use a canola oil. We, we had trouble finding, believe it or not, couldn't find canola oil in the supermarket that we found. But sometimes that happens, so you just modify, you know what will work. All right, so um, I'm going to do a, a fruit crisp, and as I do that, I will, I'm just going to move that over. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries or frozen cranberries. You can't get fresh, keep the frozen in your freezer. Because 
what happens is you buy the berries, they're good Monday, or they're good, so they, or let's say you shopped uh, like on the weekend, fr Thursday, Friday, by Tuesday maybe it, what, they weren't so good. Frozen will always work. So these can even be prepared, put in Ziploc bags in your freezer, plain simple. And I'm just going to grab a bowl here. It's a big one. We'll dump in some blueberries, strawberries, all sliced up, raspberries. Now we have space. And apple, plain simple baking apple. Pretty well everybody has apples in their house. So those are simple ingredients to have on hand. You toss this up with some sugar. I'm using a white sugar here. You can have, you're not going to be able to have, let's say, you could have fresh fruit for breakfast. You could have it with your oatmeal, which we're going to use on the topping. Need a third of a cup of sugar in here. Take my little scoop. One quarter, one third. Brown sugar for two weeks, you're better off staying off of it. There, you're not quite sure where the source is coming in, but white sugar and brown sugar, all white sugar really is, all brown sugar really is, is white sugar with uh, some molasses in it. And so the molasses is where the, the concern is. So just use white sugar, it's just fine. You could use honey, it would work just fine. Some cinnamon, exactly a teaspoon or so. Cinnamon's good for you, especially if you're diabetic, by the way. I'm sure many of you know that. Uh, and some uh, flour. Which I put somewhere. Oh, there it is. Thank you. You could use a whole wheat flour, absolutely. Third of a cup. All these ingredients that are going into the fruit crisp, which is really, if you don't have one, one fruit, use more of another, can pretty well be used in a smoothie. Uh, add a banana. You can use dairy. People think you need to put um, a, you need to have dairy, you need yogurt, or you need milk, you, or ice cream in a smoothie. It's not necessary. You can use frozen fruit, just slightly less than that, and we'll toss it. You can use frozen fruit, and you'll get wonderful smoothies. You have a lid-free smoothie in the booklet. It's an excellent breakfast. Toss this all together. And you can grease the pan. You actually don't even have to bother. But somebody always has an old, ratty grandmother's metal pan and everything kind of sticks and then they, they complain they have to wash it. So I just say spray it with a little bit of whatever. Toss this in. The fruit can even be stewed if you wanted to. This recipe is wonderful because it freezes really well. The problem that you're going to have, is that your biggest problem is going to be that the rest of the family is going to eat everything up and not leave anything for you. So there we go. Okay. And you just pat this down. and you've got your fruit in here. Now we have to put a topping on this, and we'll repeat the same ingredients, which will be our flour,
our sugar again. And um, our oatmeal. Don't use the oats in the little packages because you don't, they're, it's not the same. You want to use just the big bag and then it's very convenient for the whole family. Use a knife in here. Ah. You need about three quarters of a cup. Just almost fill it. Close enough. Back in here. Our sugar. If somebody is diabetic, they certainly can use an alternative sweetener like a granular Splenda if they want to. It will work. If somebody is gluten-free, they can use a gluten-free flour. Again, no problem. Approximately there. Just a little bit more, it won't matter. And a bit of oil. Using the oil, you think I have been making a fruit crisp, I need to have butter. Canola oil works totally fine. And toss this together. This topping, you can add chopped nuts to it. Uh, use your, you can do this in the food processor, you can make up big batches of it. Use this as a topping for any kind of fruit. Apples berries, uh, mango, whatever, whatever kind of fruit that you happen to like. You can cut the fat down actually if you use a little bit of fruit juice and it'll work well. And here we go. It was some cinnamon which I put in a really good corner, but we'll do it without, it's fine. I usually just pile it on top. Clean up the mess. And then I spread it down. So you could make this in individual containers. This is a great thing to have for breakfast, for dessert. Oatmeal works great as a breakfast, as we said, with your uh, either almond milk, which you can make yourself, there's recipes in the book, or coconut milk. This will bake out for, they can go in the microwave, you don't have to be, have fancy equipment, this is just plain, simple goodness. The little blueberry fell out, we'll stick it in the middle so everybody will know there will be a berry in it. Who thinks that they can't do that? Anybody? I mean, your kids could do this. So this would just bake off. So microwave or conventional oven. You can do it in individual containers. It'll probably take about maybe half an hour if you were doing individual portions. And again, hide it from your family. That's the key. And we'll put that here. All right. Now, let's, that, so we've covered some of breakfast. The fact that you can do, there we go, we'll turn that over. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. And we're going to do some chicken. One of the big challenges is the protein content. So a good roast will help you. Turkey will help. Uh, you can make large portions of roasted turkey breast can be cooked or chicken breast can be cooked. You can marinate. One of my tricks that I like to do is I will take chicken, and I've done it with beef as well, and I'll take my 
seasoning ingredients, and you can change it. Here I've used um, olive oil, um, I've used a little bit of lemon juice, which will tenderize it, fresh dill, which we're gonna just throw in here, and salt, pepper, paprika. That's all it is. You can make up pa uh, packages of this and freeze them, okay? That freezing is very convenient. You come home for dinner, um, the idea is basically to take it out in the morning before you go to work, or take it out the night before. If you had to, you could take it out. If you press it flat, your pieces will uh, thaw much more quickly. So it doesn't take very long, or just a quick little zap in the microwave, or let it sit out for a little bit. Should marinate for about, hmm, maybe, if it, if it marinates for about, 15 minutes, it's fine. If it marinates for an hour, better. Otherwise, stick it in the fridge. And so we had here uh, lemon. I use a lot of fresh lemon. If you don't want to use lemon, you could use lime. You could use orange juice as the marinade. You need something acidic. You could use um, a balsamic vinegar. There's no soy, so you've got to be a little bit more creative. But we're gonna, so this is how I would basically do it. You could make one chicken breast just for you. You could make batches of them and flavor them differently. If you leave the seeds in the little dish, then everybody will know you used a real lemon. You know that. <laughs> Limes don't have any seeds. Right. We want some paprika. This is really a very nice paprika. Um, it's a Hungarian. That's poor. Just a little sprinkle. Uh, these happen to be chicken tenders. You could make chicken fingers. If you were making breaded chicken, Probably the easiest thing to do would be like a roast chicken and season with, you know, the flavorings and the herbs that you like. But um, if you use a, um, you know, uh, um, the herbs that work for you and you change them around a little bit. So you use something acidic and a little bit of oil and the two together will cause your chicken to be very, very tender. I guarantee you that if you do this, Anybody, anybody can do this. It comes out beautifully well. A little salt and pepper go in. So we have our box of salt. And when Jamie Oliver first started off as the naked chef in his kitchen, it was always fascinating to watch him. He would take, oh, this is nicely sealed. How do you break your fingernails? It's, opening packages, okay. So you don't need much. This is a coarse grain salt, but this will dissolve in the liquid. So what you do is you pour on high and then nobody really notices that there's too much. And if you wanted to pour half a box of salt on, you could on a low iodine diet. That's not the problem, okay? It's maybe not so good for your blood pressure, but it's raining. Okay. And some pepper, we put some in the other. Uh, I like to use a pepper grinder. I think this is a blank. Oh no, well, it might, it may have. Salt and pepper. What I would recommend, you should take your salt and put it into a shaker and mark it, lid, okay, and your name. Do, basically, anybody could use it in the family, but you don't want to make, you don't want to be using the other salt shaker. You want to know that this is the salt shaker that is safe for a patient who's on a low iodine diet. So mark your name on it, and mark lid safe, and you're set to go. Um, a little bit of olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, use canola oil. Just a little drizzle, doesn't need too much. And this can just sit here. You can, okay, so in terms of your bread, if you are used to using commercial breadcrumbs, forget it. You're gonna to have to use something else. 
what you can use is matzo meal, which is finely ground matzo till it becomes almost like a flour. Um, you could make your own bread. Take off whatever's a little bit dry. I'd suggest making probably three or four loaves in advance. Put them away in the freezer, hide them, because guaranteed everybody else is going to want them. You think, you know, here's your, you know, your patient's going to say, I'm on a lid, poor me, I have to have my own bread. Everyone's going to say, oh, I want that bread. Okay, it's really good. You can use it to make a pizza. Can't have cheese on it, so you think about, okay, so consider yourself lactose intolerant. That's basically what you'd have to do. Okay, so this is, has marinated off. You can do different versions of it. We have here some parchment paper. And you can take pieces of chicken. And if you are having company for dinner, we'll say this is one whole breast approximately here. And top it with some red pepper, some yellow pepper, a little bit of green onions, um, maybe a little dill. Well, there was supposed to be some in there. Some over my shoulder for good luck. Practice making birthday presents. Parchment paper. Haven't got parchment? Use aluminum foil. Haven't got foil? Put it on a baking pan and bake it that way. <laughs> if you, <coughs> excuse me. If you want, you can do it right on the barbecue. If you are grilling, you have to be careful that you've scraped off your grill well. If you're doing it, you know, because you don't know what has been on from the rest of the family. So I make a little package here, and I kind of scrunch it all up here, and I scrunch it all up there, and I have my little package of chicken and vegetables, meal in one. This just could go into the oven and bake off for about 20 minutes. Uh, you could um, put it again in the micro, it's done in three minutes, dinner is fast, no excuse. You can do a whole big tray and of the plain, simple chicken and bake it off and then you've got it ready and you package it up after cooking. All right, so we're going to take our marinated chicken from the bag. And we'll check and see how hot it is. You can marinate chicken for actually up to 48 hours in the fridge, so it's really a neat trick. Ah, hot. You want the sizzle. If you wanted to add vegetables to this, you could. I'm using a non-stick skillet. So this is basically the chicken tenders, or you could use the whole breast. And once this will get a little bit cooked, we'll add a bit of this as liquid. You notice I didn't add any extra oil. There was oil in the marinade. So that worked out very nicely. <clears throat> you could do the same idea. You could do, you could put in lots of fresh parsley, lots of fresh basil. You could do a chimichurri, which would be like a South American type of chicken. <clears throat> Large pieces will take longer, obviously, the thicker it is. This can even go on like a, a George Foreman type of grill, so it's very, very simple to do. I have some extra veg are left over, so I always try to boost everything with more vegetables. I'll just throw it on the pan. And we're basically turning this into a, a stir fry. There's some garlic here. Didn't put it in before, but we'll add it in now. It's fine. And you can just slice it up. 
If garlic has that little green sprout in it, forget it. Take out the sprout, because that's what makes garlic bitter. Just sort of roughly chopped. I'm not being very fancy about it. Garlic you don't want to add, cook for very long because it gets some, um, it burns and gets kind of bitter. So we've transformed the recipe basically into a stir fry. Pan is a drop dry. So if you marinate, just a, a tip on marination. Very important that that marinade mixture has to come to a boil. I've got that on the other side of the pan. Turn it over. You could add zucchini to this, any kind of vegetables you want. Again, no soy, but just a different flavor. The lemon boosts the taste. Once that's done, we'll let that cook a little bit. That's your hot dish. Here's chicken that maybe you had on the, on the grill from last night's dinner, on the barbecue. Salt, pepper, whatever seasonings you happen to like. And you want to make yourself tomorrow's lunch. Go away, you're not invited. This is not for you. And what you do is you prepare up your chicken or turkey breast or any kind of like a flank steak would work, work well. That's actually the photo that's on the cover of the low iodine diet book. And if it's chilled, you can slice it across the grain. And this is going to replace the ham, the turkey, the deli that's prepared and that you're using for your sandwiches. If you slice it as it's cold, it's nice and thin easy to do it. I've even done it hot and it works out very well. This can be used in a wrap. In a wrap you could use, um, you could use a tortilla um, or a flatbread, basically no salt added. So you have to be very careful to make sure that there's no salt added. So again, corn, a corn tortilla that's made salt free. Not because the salt is the enemy, it's the iodine that's the enemy. It's a salt with a deadly weapon. And that's what you want to watch out for. So this is quite quick. You could serve this on rice. Yes, you can have rice. Okay. You can have this out with a baked potato. You can have this with no fries, the home fries. You can make serve it with, with some chips some, um, some uh, crackers that are uh, dried out, or pita crackers that you've dried out. And you want to make sure that this is, a little bit more heat there, we're getting a bit of loss there. So we'll cut this up. Keep your fingers back, because you don't want to add extra protein. We find all kinds of treasures. I think this fly thinks it's dinner time. What do we tell him? To leave, right? <laughs> all right. So this should be pretty well done. And we'll platter this. Here's dish one. Same chicken, just slightly different.
You could also use actually ground nuts as a coating for your chicken. We'll face them all the same direction. So nicer. And the marinade has cooked off and has formed a little bit of a glaze. So it's really, really simple to do. Or again, you could just put it in a little packet and have them done. Dish one, you could take um, some, you could serve it with a salad. I have a nice tomato in here. Show you a nice trick that I like to do. I play with my food. Just take your tomato. This is a Roma tomato, and this is what I usually use for doing salsa. The salsa recipe is in your booklet. You can purchase it for tasting. And you zigzag your knife back and forth. Right. And basically curl it up. And you have a pretty little flower here. Makes you feel better. If you had Basil get out of here, you weren't invited for dinner. He doesn't quite understand. Two little basil leaves would do. This is spinach as it happens. And there you go. Salad. So we'll chop up the tomato that's left. You could make a gazpacho. You could roast these tomatoes off and make a tomato sauce. If you, oh, that's not very nice. He's ruining my lunch. <laughs> Go away. Oh, well, we'll ignore him. So your greens, what you can do with your greens, you can buy pre-washed greens. If you want to make sure to wash your greens well, afterwards wrap them up in paper towels and I store them either in a Ziploc bag or in a, um, oh, what do you call it, a, um, like even a dish towel, a cotton dish towel and it'll come out just fine. Uh, if you have some tomato, you could throw that in just for a bit of color. And we're going to do a dressing. You can use your food processor if you want. You basically take balsamic vinegar. Uh, this one's closed. We broke a bottle. <laughs> we took it out of the fridge and it went smashing all over. I think they will remember me in that kitchen forever. This is a Cav Cavalli Balsamico. Chef was very kind and gave it to us. Okay. About a quarter of a cup. Some people like to measure directly in just into a measuring cup. general ratio is three parts oil to one part acid. Um, so that was balsamic, so I need, but I'm going to do, this is an equal equal. So it's really quite satisfying. So it's a quarter cup of each, so quarter and quarter is a half. And some orange juice. 
Orange juice is fine for breakfast. Orange juice is fine for smoothies. Approximately. If you want to add a little garlic, you can. A little sugar, a little sweetener of some sort. This should just about do it. I always like to add a little bit just for a bit of sweetness. And uh, yeah, this way here. This will do just fine. Salt, pepper, same thing again. Remember that your salt will dissolve because it's very coarse. This is non-iodized salt. So that's simple enough to do. What I like to do is I make up a big batch. I'll double it, I'll triple it. If you want to put some herbs in here, you can. If you don't have balsamic vinegar, make it with lemon juice. It's not terrible. It's just a different flavor. A rice vinegar, the unseasoned one. This also is very good as a marinade for your for a chicken. It'll give it a balsamic, you'll end up with a balsamic chicken. So shake it up. If you wanted to add a little bit of mustard to this, you could. Very simple. Keep it in the fridge, big batch. Mayonnaise is not on the diet because you, unless you make it yourself. So you could make it, there is a mayonnaise, you could do two egg whites for a whole egg, make your own. But a nice substitute is to take avocado and just mash the pulp and use it as a, as a schmear and it works out really well. Okay, balance is in the fridge. Maybe I'll use it for, you know, my barbecue. When you're, just something that you, you may not know, just general information to prevent um, HCAs which form when you put food over flame. When you're grilling, marinating any of your proteins. If you marinate them first, it acts as a protective barrier and prevents the formation of HCAs. Um, you can, your vegetables won't form them, so I like to do lots of grilled vegetables. You have a recipe for grilled vegetables in the book. That is really fabulous. I find lots of grilled vegetables are, you know, very helpful for anybody who's, and just generally for the whole family, but for anybody on a, in the family. Take this one here. Go. Oh. Just toss this up, put a little bit of peppers in here. I'm just going to put it on some simple greens. Toss this well. You don't add your dressing to greens ahead of time. Another thing you could do is use your vegetables in soups. A lot of people like to um, like to use canned soups, and the problem with the canned soups is again, salt. You don't know what the source of the salt is. So what you do is you make your own. So there's, you've got a wonderful example of a, of a I think it was my, the, the lentil soup there that we gave you, or you can use beans or whatever. And those will work very nicely. Just let me grab a plate here. Um, soups, will, soups will stay in your refrigerator or can be frozen. They'll fill you up. They make a great lunch. Your spinach can be used in a stir fry happily. There's a wonderful recipe for coleslaw that you can make ahead of time. Great for um, a summer for a summer slaw, and it holds in the fridge for about a month, so it goes way past the time of a lid. 
and that will be very useful. There we go. And then just fan out your pieces of chicken on top here. Again, so remember we have our wrap that you can do. You can make a chicken sandwich. You can just, this is going to replace your prepared deli that you are usually buying. Uh, this one can clean, all clean. All right, so these can be prepared up and you can have them ready for when you come home. So there's two types, two, one recipe, two recipes, three recipes, all from one chicken. So you're not going to be bored. We've done our, um, our different type of a dressing and you can add any vegetables you like. When I do roasted vegetables, which is part of the uh, information in the book, the ones that I like to use are peppers, Move this over to here. Wipe that off. Flip this over. Nobody sees the mess underneath. And you let your family clean it up, right? If you're lucky. <laughs> right. Um, and then just cut some pepper strips. And usually when I do roasted vegetables, I'll use that same type of balsamic marinade and I'll use it, throw my vegetables in the oven. They can go on to the barbecue for summertime, so there's no problem with that. And we'll just put some color on the plate here. Remember, you eat with your eyes. So we'll use a little red for some color. Roasted peppers is a recipe in the book, in the regular, uh, in the lid cookbook. Um, they can be used, you can actually roast them and after you, or you can do them on the grill or in the oven, peel them. The way you peel them is you take them, put them in a big bowl, cover the top, and basically it's like they're going to the sauna and they sweat. And then you remove the peel. And you can puree that mixture and it's fabulous. And you can use it again as a spread. It works well. Whenever I don't know what to do, I end up making roasted vegetables. It, it, it's a good thing to, you know, to serve to your family. You can do pasta. Pasta can be cooked in advance. Put some on the other side here. Uh, go over here. Take a piece of lemon. Again, eating with our eyes if you feel like it. The easiest way is just to slice. Hopefully I get one slice that's going to be nice. There, I've got two there. Yeah, this one looks like a good one. Just a little cut and a little twist. And you have a touch of color again. So simple, simple preparation, visual eating will help you a lot. Um, hummus is phenomenal. Uh, there's a wonderful recipe in the Lid Cookbook. It's, as I mentioned before, it's available now in a, um, compatible to iPad, iPhone, etc. If you go to Your Health Press, there's information. If any of your patients have a problem, I'm, I get a lot of calls. People can't find the book sometimes. Uh, they have questions. They've come over and they've, like I live in Toronto and they've picked up a book from me. And I always sit down and I always answer questions. 
to anybody who comes in and I try to walk them through the, uh, the steps that are necessary just to get it done. So, uh, so some of the recipes are, there's the super salsa, which we would be using the ripe tomatoes for it, garlic, a little bit of fresh parsley or coriander if you like it better, basil if you have it. If you haven't got fresh, use dried. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, green onions, olive oil, lemon juice, and non-iodized salt. Non-iodized salt. As much as you want, as little as you want. Okay, dash of cayenne, salt-free tomato paste, and there's lots of that available. There's recipes for doing even your own ketchup, although you can now get uh, salt-free so, uh, salt ketchup. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention, sometimes you'll see Something, let's say, for example, like tomato sauce, and it'll say salt-free, no added salt. And then you look on the label, and it says that there's a sodium content. There may be 30 milligrams of sodium, correct? And you say, oh, but it's supposed to be salt-free. It's coming in naturally into the, into the uh, food, just as, as how it goes. It's just naturally there. Um, there's a, an excellent peanut butter here. You can do it plain. You can do it chunky. Chocolate, I've actually added chocolate to it. If you're using chocolate, you use a dairy-free chocolate. Uh, there's Schmerling's, which is a decent dairy-free, soy-free chocolate. Some people say no soy in the chocolate. Some say there's trace amounts. But I happen to know they are really good. Um, good products often are the kosher ones because they're very, if they say parve, P-A-R-E-V-E, -E, it means dairy-free. So remember, that's very, very important. Um, you're making your own chips. Basically, all you do is you take your good old potato. This is an Idaho. I checked its passport. I checked all its relatives along genealogy.org, and it came directly from Idaho. And basically, non-iodized salt to taste, basil, oregano, garlic, all your dry spices. You could make up seasoning salt if you wanted to do that. Some of the good snacks that you might want to do, you can buy salt-free versions of corn chips or tortilla chips, some brands of potato chips. Nuts are fine. They're high protein, and they fill you. Soups also fill you. People are hungry. You know, and it's not even, I don't think it's even the physical hunger as, the, as much as the emotional hunger. And so you need things that are going to kind of feed that, that need to just to feel nourished and good. And you want to have things that are really wonderful to taste. There's, you can't go to McDonald's for your fries, but you can definitely do an no fry fries. I use an egg white just to coat the potatoes and season them up. I've actually taken bread and taken sliced homemade bread cut in chunks, thrown it in a food processor. Your food processor is a fabulous friend. Take your uh, bread, throw it in, and whirl it from the fresh bread. And put it on a baking sheet like this, and lay it out, and let it dry in the oven. And you've got your own homemade panko. That's actually, that, that little tip is in, uh, I did a book called uh, The New Food Processor Bible. If any of you are interested, I have a fabulous website called um, gourmania.com, and I'm on Facebook as well. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer questions, always. It may take a day or two or four, but I get to them. Meatballs. Here's a, another good one. So you can use, uh, to cut down a little bit on the beef, if you're watching, you want heart healthy. So, and, and again, to your, you're, you're expecting to gain weight when you're, you're hypothyroid, but you're not going to, because you're eating really healthy foods. You know what's in there. So ground chicken or lean ground beef or veal or turkey. And as I, basically, I put lots of uh, vegetables in to bulk it up, so I'll, I'll grind up onion and carrot and celery. Um, and for the egg in a burger, what you use is two egg whites for each egg, and it works out really well. Uh, salt, pepper, non-iodized salt, pepper, garlic powder. Matzo meal is the binder. Another good one, it's not in this particular recipe, is just even grated potato, and I've done that. Or even cooked potato will, will bind things up. You can get salt-free cranberry sauce and salt-free tomato sauce. It makes a fabulous... Uh, fabulous recipe. You could also use as an alternative for your ground meat, your oats. These are actually wonderful. And if anyone's watching their, their glycemic index, I often use quick cooking oats to bind up my hamburger mixture. 
Um, there's a ratatouille here, which is wonderful. I'm a, I'm a very strange eater. I, I, before I left for, uh, from Toronto, I was, eat, I was cleaning up my fridge. I ended up eating ratatouille for breakfast. And it's good. It's really, it's very tasty. It's got eggplant and onion, onion and peppers and zucchini and lots of mushrooms. Mushrooms add really good flavor. You could even take uh, your mushrooms and saute them up in a little oil and add them as a topping, for example, to a burger and make a great burger. But you're not going to be able to have a cheeseburger. So you won't. For two weeks, not the end of the world. Uh, you can transform this into a, um, a vegetarian stew, which gives you another option. The vegetarian chili, uh, I know Sarah Rosenthal, who's here, loves a vegetarian chili. She'll often call it, I just finished making your chili. The spring mix uh, vegetable, mel um, vegetable medley is your basic lemon juice, olive oil, and whatever herbs you want. And um, you can bake your, um, your, or basically roast your vegetables for about 15 to 18 minutes. If you're doing root vegetables, uh, that's really easy. I love a sheet pan. I throw everything on, a little bit of olive oil and something acidic, salt, pepper, and some kind of herbs. Throw them in, and they'll, the longer cooking root vegetables take longer to cook, but stuff like, like peppers and, and zucchini are done very quickly. Uh, we gave you the recipe for the, uh, the dressing. If the dressing, by the way, I'm just doing a checklist here. If the dressing is in the fridge, what happens is the olive oil gets solid. So what you do is I take the, I take it out for a few minutes and then I shake. So it's good exercise, you know, builds your muscles. Kitchen aerobics, <laughs> that's what you do. Uh, and let it stand for a few minutes and shake it. Then put it back in the fridge and it keeps really, really well. The coleslaw, amazing, I have to tell you. The jumble berry crisp, very, very flexible, any kind of fruit crisp. So the crazy chocolate cake, you know, people say, oh, oh, I can't have it. I can't have cake. It's going to be somebody's birthday. What am I going to do? Crazy chocolate cake, it's an, it is a egg-free recipe. It's made with cocoa. Okay, unsweetened cocoa. That doesn't mean the cocoa mix that you buy that's got the milk powder in it. You don't want to have that. Uh, it's got a little bit of canola oil in, or you could use a, a safflower or grapeseed oil. Those would work. And it's done with cold water or brewed coffee. And you can make yourself iced coffee, serve it with a little bit of coconut milk as a summer refresher. Uh, the chocolate glaze is a really good glaze, really easy. Uh, and you, if you wanted to make it into an icing, um, you can get, Fleischmann's makes a, um, a lid safe unsalted margarine. And so just read the label, make sure that it's an unsalted margarine, but the bland, brand is Fleischmann. And uh, you, I use my food processor, whip up the top. The smoothie has a frozen banana I usually get, you want your bananas to be ripe, all right? So uh, what you do is take your bananas and when they're getting soft, throw them in a plastic bag, Ziploc bag or whatever you want to contain, whatever container you have in the freezer. Frozen fruit makes a smoothie very, very thick. Um, strawberries and either apple or orange juice, throw it in and it comes out gorgeous. You can substitute peaches, nectarines, mango, papaya, fresh pineapple, even, you know, even canned pineapple in its own juice. Cranberry or pineapple juice is the liquid. And you can add some dates to it. You could add a little bit of honey for sweetness. That would be fine. Breakfast again, egg white omelet, and all the variations that you can add in there, you might want to add in again. Uh, asparagus, broccoli, peppers, onions, mushrooms, cooked chicken. If the kid doesn't like vegetables, so you keep them all for yourself. You know, it's like kids who don't like their food to touch. I always think about that. But these are all things that you can make for, and keep your own skillet so you don't, or wash it out well in between. Uh, and salt-free tomato sauce for like a Spanish. Another good one for breakfast um, are pancakes. And basically an apple, um, and you grate your apple and you use flour. You can use whole wheat flour as a substitute anytime. Sugar, 
non-iodized salt, baking powder, baking soda. Apple juice becomes your liquid. If you want to use a different liquid, you could. Um, egg whites, two egg whites replaces one egg or about three or four tablespoons of liquid egg white. If you have an extra tablespoon, it doesn't matter. And then basically grease your skillet with a little canola oil. And combine your dry ingredients. You can have that all ready in a little bag. And all you do is throw in the apple juice oil and egg and give a quick whisk and throw it on the pan. Your kids can make that for you. Your husband can make that for you. It doesn't matter who, somebody in the family can make it. So family members can help uh, you prepare for a lid in that way. And basically drop it from a spoon onto your skillet. Pancakes are fabulous because they can be prepared ahead and frozen on a cookie sheet. So when you want breakfast, take them out and then put them into um, the oven, the toaster oven, the microwave, a little bit of maple syrup on it and it's fine. Fresh blueberries, you can put fresh, uh, fresh or frozen blueberries in instead of the grated apple. Uh, in the cookbook, there are phenomenal muffin recipes. They are, they are good enough for the whole family to eat. By the way, when you're working with flour, throughout the country, flour is different. So be aware of that for your patients. Um, and we talked about doing them in the microwave. And so those are some of the things that you can do. You have at the beginning of the book a, um, a shopping list where to find things, finding commercial bread, bread substitutes, any home-baked bread we said. Um, the lid safe baking dough is extremely easy to make. Uh, and we talked about the, um, the tortillas, um, which will work very well. I'm just trying to think if I missed anything. I mean, there's so much really. Uh, the only beverages you really can't have are those that contain salt, are things like the Bloody Mary mixes. You have to want, you can eat marshmallows, you can make hot chocolate with coconut milk. Um, don't, um, you know, don't use the, the, the prepared ones already done. Um, and don't use the colored, like the colored marshmallows. You, like you want to watch out for the dyes or some of the candies that have the red dye in it. Alcohol. Um, that's a good question. You, some say yes, some say no. A little bit of wine. If you don't have wine, a little bit of apple juice will usually work just fine or any liquid. Um, alcohol, such as beer and wine, it's allowed on the lid, but for, if you're hypothyroid, it should be restricted or avoided because the hypothyroid liver can't metabolize well. Okay, so they really don't require much, maybe a drizzle, maybe not. Okay, cooking wine contains 1.5% salt. Watch out for those. And uh, you've got your meats, and no, forget about the dairy counter. All right, uh, and we talked about the beef, the, the pork, the veal, and forget about the prepared baked goods. And that's all. So basically help your patients be prepared one of the recommendations, if any of you came in um, after the panel discussion, was to have your office, have your staff go on a, on a lid. And I thought it was a great idea, because then you really know what's involved. Um, so those are the things that you can do. So if your staff has an understanding um, of what's involved, once they've lived it, then it's easier for them to explain it. There is conflicting information out there. I can tell you that anything that is in the lid cookbook is approved totally safe so you don't have to worry. Don't have your patients, they, they start looking everywhere. You know, they become like Google junkies. I have to look here, I have to look on that side. This side says I can have brown sugar. That one says I can't have brown sugar. This one says I can have this type of salt. The other one says I can't. So just sort of try to keep it simple as possible. Focus on the good stuff, focus on what you can have. All of this is there to help you become, you know, get your body in good shape and to be healthy. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have. Sea salt, that's a controversy. If the sea salt is non-iodized, if it says non-iodized salt and it's sea salt, apparently Trader Joe's has a non-iodized sea salt. It's a controversy. For two weeks, you can manage with table salt. Not terrible.
Dr. Mandel says she, she has found one um, that's available at Trader Joe's. The Morton's, uh, Morton salt is okay. Some people, I know in Canada they were using pickling salt because there's nothing in it, which is interesting. Basically, the key words are non-iodized salt. If the sea salt comes in a package and they can guarantee to you, you call the manufacturer and they say that this is non-iodized, fine. You just have to know better not to do it. For two weeks, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna go crazy. There's so many restrictions. Why focus on just like one little thing? Buy a box of salt. How many kinds of salt do you really want? Yeah. <laughs> but I actually, I have, uh, I have Himalayan salt at home and sea salt, and I use different ones for different things. Be careful not to put the, put the salt in instead of the sugar and the sugar and in case of, instead of the salt. I know a caterer who did that one time and they, I think they took, they put, um, they were doing rice and they, uh, no, they, they were, yeah, they were, no, they were doing, they were baking and they put salt in instead of the sugar. Everything destroyed. <laughs> okay, so remember the jar trick, little shake. Um, all simple, I think your whole family, you know, the whole family can, can manage well on this. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy I've got a card here. Or if, actually, I think my email is on, maybe, might be. It, does, it isn't, if you go to gourmania.com, you'll find me. Yes. I'm Good Food at Gourmania, and I'm on Facebook, and I answer questions all the time, happily. Thank you. Well, we want, we want to thank Noreen Gillitz very, very much for her time and effort today, and thank you thank for joining you. us. Tomorrow, um, same time, same channel, 1 to 3, and the topic will be agromegaly and the dietary needs of um, agromegalic patients before and after treatment. So another interesting discussion. We hope you'll join us. Thank you so much, Noreen. Thank you, Patty.